We are more than midway through the year 2022, and it's about time we take a glimpse of what 2023 and onwards have to offer in the endurance racing series of the FIA World Endurance Championship and the North American Sports Car Racing Series, EMSA. As we know it, 2023 is bound to be a huge and exciting year for World Endurance Championship in EMSA, with many car makers that will be joining both series of new LMH and LMDH programs. This is a big deal because big manufacturers like Peugeot, Ferrari, Porsche, Cadillac, and BMW are returning to Le Mans in 2023 and 2024 after years to race in a top tier hypercar class and world endurance championship. A whole new era awaits and can't come soon enough going back to the future like the 1980s and 1990s endurance sports car racing once was. In this video, I want to cover everything you need to know about what is LMDH versus LMH as clear as possible. Believe it or not, there has been still a lot of endless debate going on all over social media and on the internet whether on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and even YouTube itself about what is the difference between LMH and LMDH cars and what they are. First, I will start elaborating on what LMDH is in EMSA and then what LMH is in WEC. The name LMDH stands for Le Mans Daytona H and is the new sports car prototype class that was created by IMSA and ACO, which the prototype cars will compete with the returning of the GTP category of the IMSA Sports Car Championship starting in January 2023. The LMDH cars will serve as a successor as they will replace the outgoing DPI 2.0 class, which is the top tier class that's still racing in EMSA from 2017 and will end after the 2022 season with the Cadillac, Acura, and Mazda DPI, while Mazda retired from EMSA in the DPI class in 2021. The LMDH cars will utilize regulations that were designed to become the next generation DPI rule set. In 2023, the GTP category will return to IMSA as the top class just 30 years after GTP cars were first introduced in 1981 and ended in 1993, and they were designed similar to the Group C cars that were introduced in 1982 for the World Endurance Championship. The LMDH cars were run in the Grand Touring Prototype category in EMSA, but the controversy about it goes on with many big questions. You might wonder, well, why is EMSA using the GTP name as the top class instead of LMDH? The answer has to do with the merging classes. In the WEC, the LMH and LMDH cars will be competing with each other for the overall championship in the WEC's hypercar class. In EMSA, IMSA, the LMH teams are eligible to go into battle with the LMDH field for every IMSA season. IMSA is naming their top class GTP, whereas it's the WEC top class will be called Hypercar. To be abundantly clear, there is no difference other than the names, and that means both LMH and LMDH cars are eligible to race in both series. LMH stands for Le Mans Hypercar and LMDH stands for Le Mans Daytona H. However, that begs the question about LMDH. Why IMSA is calling it Le Mans Daytona H instead of Le Mans Daytona Hybrid or Hypercar? Okay, simple. The reason for that matter is the H has never been defined. There was a quarrel where the FIA WEC will want H to be called Hypercar. IMSA will want H to be called Hybrid and neither didn't improve it meaning that they couldn't solve the problem and didn't agree. That implies H means Hypercar nor Hybrid so they just left it at H. Some motorsports fans, which could mean you watching this video, you would think the H just means hypercar or means hybrid. And yes, I'll admit I thought the same thing. It turns out it's false. Many on social media will get it wrong. And it's not only that. Feel free, out of pure curiosity, go on the web and search for what LMDH stands for in EMSA. And I can promise you, you'll get the answer that it means Le Mans Daytona Hybrid. Even some sources on Google get it incorrect. It just stands for Le Mans Daytona H. That's all. Now, 
How about let's learn what is the true difference between LMH and LMDH cars and questions like what are their technical specs? The LMH and LMDH cars will maintain equal pace and similar power performance figures thanks to the balance of performance so that both can compete against each other. None of them shouldn't have an advantage over one another. Both classes are limited to a minimum weight of 1,030 kilograms or 2,270 pounds, while the engine is limited to 670 brake horsepower or 500 kilowatts and has a mandated downforce drag ratio of 4 colon 1. The Le Mans Hypercar or LMH for short is a prototype race car derived from an existing road legal hypercar or vice versa. The Le Mans Hypercar series has been around since 2021 succeeding the obsolete LMP1 cars with the likes of Toyota, Glickenhaus, Alpine and Peugeot and WEC. As of 2023, we are expected to see Ferrari and maybe Van Wall competing in the Le Mans Hypercar category. Le Mans Hypercar is all about enabling maximum freedom. That means if a car maker opts to build a Le Mans Hypercar, they could run a hybrid system if they want to, run all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive and derive their race car from a road car, but not mandatory. Manufacturers build their own chassis, hybrid basically the entire machine and use a bespoke engine on their hypercar based on their street going counterparts. They can mess around with the styling and bodywork, though they are ordered to meet the safety regulations. Apart from that, they can choose what they want their cars to look like. As you can see in Toyota's hypercar, the GR010 resembles the previous Toyota TSO50 LMP1 car. Glickenhaus 007 takes the Italian styling cues from the Ferrari P4, and the grandfathered Alpine A480 LMP1 has been slightly BOP'd to compete in a hypercar class, etc. On the other hand, the LMDH or Le Mans Daytona H is all about reducing costs and being cheap that it takes to even enter the EMSA series, giving more customer race teams more attention to get involved at a lower cost and still compete for big wins. All LMDH cars have a pretty similar type of car. The car manufacturer that constructs an LMDH must partner up with four designated chassis producers by Delara, Orca, Multimatic or Ligier. They are free to design their aero slash bodywork to match their brand identity and use a bespoke engine. However, LMDH is required to run a hybrid technology, spec battery and spec gearbox produced by x and Williams Advanced Engineering. They can only run rear-wheel drive and the hybrid system to the rear axle, whereas this LMH has an option to run hybrid to the front and or rear axle. Apart from LMH, which looks like hypercars that you see on the streets, the LMDH cars' bodywork regulations aim to come back to the future, as they are aerodynamically designed to look like LMP1 and DPI cars merged into one. The LMDH will have the same spine as the future LMP2 cars and four chassis constructions will build the spines with individual manufacturers providing engines and bodywork. So far we have Acura, BMW, Cadillac and Porsche that will be racing in LMDH class and IMSA from 2023 onwards and more car makers like Audi, Alpine and Lamborghini are likely to join LMDH class in 2023 and some aiming for 2024 while others on the list are possible to enter in the future. Cadillac, BMW and Porsche are confirmed not only that they'll race in IMSA but will also race in the WEC and 24 Hours of Le Mans. Caddy and Porsche will debut at Le Mans in 2023, while BMW will debut only in EMSA 2023, then 2024 WEC and Le Mans. LMDH is relatively more affordable than LMH because teams can spend money at a smaller cost to use an existing LMP2 chassis and mandatory spec hybrid system as the basis for their car whereas this LMH is more expensive to design, manufacture, and race. They develop their own chassis from scratch and hybrid tech from the ground up. This is why LMDH draws even more car makers' attention to sign up. At the end of the day, 
cheaper running costs leads to more entries. More entry lead to more fans watching, and more viewers lead to more teams wanting to enter with their cars. While it remains to be seen how well LMDH and Le Mans hypercars are balanced in testing, several car makers are bound to jump into both formulas converging and competing within the same class is something that we have all been waiting for for decades. This means IMSA and WEC future is looking very golden with better racing, tighter competition, new cars, and new teams, and hopefully the racing is good as it sounds. I'm super duper excited that the iconic GTP name returns to IMSA and the World Endurance Championship with hypercars hitting the track and competing against each other race after race. And what's even more exciting is that it's grown the interest for the Sentinel anniversary of 2023-24 hours of Le Mans, the race of all the races. Can you imagine? This is going to be wild, and it's the right time to be alive, for real. But until then, the dawn of the new era awaits in 2023 for a lot of things. Major historic races like Rolex 24 Daytona, Sebring, Le Mans, Petit Le Mans, Road Atlanta, you name it. That's it for this video, and I hope this was much helpful to you about what is the difference between LMDH versus LMH. You can always watch it over and over again to comprehend. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button for some more upcoming motorsport videos, etc. And like I say every video, you are more than happy to give me any suggestions in the comments down below. Peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.